Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Yep, sounds good. You see me? Yeah, yeah. You see me. Yeah, you sound a little bit quiet, but not too terrible. Am I oh, there we what go. What about now? Yeah, that's better. <laughs> I'm, I'm using my uh, podcast stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say, looks like a nice little setup here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I have my own podcast, so I'm just using it. Look at that! Look at you, all fancy now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> trying what's up not much not much good afternoon how has the day been good to see you again i mean uh, it's been good i mean i i just didn't realize you just woke up <laughs> like we're in different zones uh i've already done one workout and i'm in my afternoon i'm getting ready for my second workout of the day <laughs> okay all right there you go that good. far Good fun, good fun. Of course, got to stay active and get ready for everything coming up, right? So that's uh, yeah, that's all fun. And this, how's everything else uh, in life? You know, how's a uh, little biggie boy? Just everything else. <laughs> He's just outside the door. So yeah, <laughs> He's <laughs> waiting. He's like, Mom, let yeah, me in. Good. Where, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's been a while since we uh, saw you fight, and it's funny, not funny, but I didn't realize, like, that you had kind of an injury until I just randomly seeing, like, oh, she just had surgery, what's going on? So, like, what's the story? What happened here? And uh, when did, uh, was something with your knee, right? Tell me all the time away, what what happened? Yeah. I mean, I mean after I fought Lena, I, I got offered to fight Aldana, uh uh, and on the 10th of September card on the Camps and Diaz card, mm. which I was, which of course I agreed to, and I signed the contract and the day after I injured myself in wrestling. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, I was like wrestling against the wall and I've already done like a lot of rounds because Fridays uh, is our wrestling day and we do like a lot of, uh, a lot of short rounds and it just started to get like at that point where where you kind of fatigue and you only have like a one or two rounds left and and i just ended up uh, uh like i always train with guys but i ended up with a bigger guy that hooked my leg and just forced himself from one on side and my knee totally collapsed mm. so it was kind of like it wasn't me doing anything bad or anything that i kind of like you know like soccer players where they kind of like twist mm -hmm. and do like uh some kind of movement by themselves and they kind of like fuck up their own knee. It wasn't like that. It was kind of like force. Okay. So it took a lot of power uh, to get my ACL ruptured. Um, but like, yeah, it it kind of like I, I heard like a big, huge pop, not even a pop. It was kind of like, like you were swinging a baseball bat, Ooh. that sound. Yeah, it was kind of a loud noise, and it, the pain was, like, really bad. Um, but then after a while, the pain kind of, like, went away, and I kind of knew that, ah, you know what? Uh, then I know something is ruptured, mm -hmm. like, for sure. Because when the pain goes away, it kind of ends up like that. But, you know, it's kind of like a freak thing. And I've, you know, I've been fighting since 2005, and I've never injured myself mm -hmm. and like it was kind of one of those things that yeah like just because you and and then you're a female in this sport you always go with guys and you know the heavier ones and you know it's just it's just bound to happen i guess once <laughs> you know once in a fighter's life you have to do one acl surgery at least, <laughs> unfortunately <so>. yeah <laughs> But I kind of like went into surgery just like one and a half week after. It was kind of quickly, uh, and uh, and then we decided uh, to send me to the PI just a week after my surgery. Okay, three All months. Right. So I spent my first three months uh, in Vegas just rehabbing. Jeez, I mean, how was that whole process? I know, kind of dealing with especially the ACL of all things, kind of different for everybody, but. For you, it was pretty smooth, uh, pretty frustrating, I'm sure, just because of the time, you know, it takes, right? I mean, it's been smooth, I guess, because I, I didn't have any any problems. I didn't have any infections or anything. And I did travel just days after my mm -hmm. surgery, which was fine. Uh, and I do travel a lot. Uh, but 
I mean, I had a pretty smooth, uh, everything was kind of smooth. It was just kind of like annoying to spend uh, like three months in Vegas without anybody. It was, uh, I didn't have my boyfriend or anything with me. Uh, so uh, that was kind of like yeah, frustrating because usually when you're in Vegas, I was supposed to fight around that time. Right. Uh, but yeah, that didn't happen. And, you know, I just like, and I never been, I've been, I've been away for 18 months before, but not with that kind of injury. Uh, but yeah, I just like, I just five, six days a week. I was at the PI twice a day. So, right. Uh, yeah those first three months was kind of hard but when i got home i felt much better yeah uh because i i made a goal that i I was gonna go on a treadmill before i leave vegas Hmm. and that's what i did so all right so when i got home and i continued my rehab it was just much easier and then i was kind of back into i'm getting like i was getting back into boxing getting you know easily going so it was much better when i got to train more Right. And how was it kind of getting back into, you know, the grappling? Because I've heard, you know, people say there'll be a little bit of the fear at first because, you know, that's where the injury happened, doing that kind of stuff again. But for you, were you pretty much like, all right, finally, we're good to go? Or how was that? I mean, I was kind of nervous. I I was kind of nervous, but I was just like, you know what? Uh, My physical uh, therapist here in Sweden um i had i was really lucky to get a brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt as a physical trainer as well <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh that was taking care of my rehab so i was rolling uh the first person i was rolling with was him and i was feeling pretty safe because he knows how like uh with how those kind of injuries are but i wasn't feeling anything actually like the only thing i was kind of worried about like is going back to that wrestling uh um position where i got injured Mm -hmm. but honestly i was not even thinking about the about that at all sometimes i could be kind of nervous but but then um i didn't like i didn't start uh training uh, like uh beforehand or anything so i just waited until they told me okay now you can start doing this so i wasn't in a i wasn't in a position where i could actually injure myself because i actually waited i didn't i didn't like uh say you know fuck it i'm just gonna roll i don't care about waiting you know (laughs) no no i just waited because i was kind of like i was i was like i'm just gonna take care of this rehab as as good as I can, because yeah. I'm not in a rush. I was like, I already, I already lost the biggest fight with Alon. I was like, what? I'm gonna be away for a year anyway, so let's just do it right. So. Yeah, yeah. And the worst thing you do is rush for no reason and then make it worse or something yeah. too soon. It's like oh, we yeah. don't, we don't need to do that. <laughs> no. And especially when, like, I'm sure you've been keeping busy, too, with uh, what your kind of analyst and commentary work you're doing over there, right? That's been something that's consistent, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I've been working for a Swedish uh, network via play for about three years now. Uh, and I do all the commentary for the UFC, uh, for the UFC shows uh, in Sweden uh, behind the, the computer. Uh, and we have a couple of other... Uh, like everything on via play that could be like we had uh cage wars we had ksw we had ufc we had pfl uh but for now we only have like a ufc and cage uh mm-hmm. finish show so i do that like every weekend so i've been able to do that like the only time i w- uh, wasn't able to do that was when i was in vegas mm. um but yeah i mean i'm i'm basically watching fights all day long yeah and all weekends so i like it's kind of a it's kind of a cheat code because i get to watch like i'm kind of surprised that a lot of more fighters don't watch more fights because it's like free studying yeah like it's free experience and i i heard some people don't even would like to watch fight. like it's not about what you like it's like you studying exactly what you're working with it's like being a doctor, but not being a surgeon, but you don't actually do any surgery. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, I watch a lot and I get to like, so I'm the expert commentator. So mm. I just like, 
I'm just telling you exactly what I see happening. Right. And the and the fights. Yeah. All right. Well, very cool. Glad that that's still going strong and that you're still enjoying it because yeah. that's obviously a big part. You don't want to do something you're not liking. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's cool. And I mean, how how popular would you say you are in Sweden, Panny? Because I feel like I'm always seeing you doing a lot of Swedish media things or getting plenty of attention, you know, from uh, the country people there. But it's hard for me to say not being there. But how popular are you? <laughs> Dude, Pretty big deal. Like, I would say I should <laughs> like I should be like uh, like when it comes to MMA, I'm guessing everybody knows who I am because I'm. I would say, well, I am the most uh, successful female fighter we have from yeah. Sweden, of course. But I think all the via play gigs and everything is making it better. Uh, but then I'm I'm not really out there, out there. You know, I'm not really doing crazy shit yeah. or anything. Yeah. I'm just basically <laughs> home training or like commenting during night. So I'm not really out there. But it's, uh, it's funny that you ask because I think uh, I don't know. I'm just like uh, I'm. I'm pretty sure people know know who I am, but I'm not really. Sometimes I don't get that. So if I like go into town, like in my hometown, and somebody looks at me strange, maybe they just kind of like intrigued that they see like a like MMA fighter that you they usually see on TV. But I'm like, why are you looking at me, you creep? You know, I get like, Ugh. you don't like, think about it. <laughs> no, I don't think about it because I don't see myself that way. Right. Uh, I mean, I had a dude like just when I got injured and just got surgery, I was outside my car and I didn't even think that my car is a sponsored car. So I have my name on it. Oh, <laughs> give away. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, then, and this guy was just walking by me and he's just like, and like it was kind of weird you, you have to agree with me with this but he was just walking by me and he's like hey can i take a picture of you and i'm like no why would you that's weird why would you just take a picture of me he's like no because i'm a fan and i'm like well you have to start off saying that yeah you just say i'm gonna take a picture of you uh, so i was like yeah sure then you can then we can take a picture together because yeah. if you would just like photograph me off the street that would be weird <laughs> I mean, at least at least he mentioned it rather than just going right for the picture. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm just like, no, are you weird? <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Uh, that's <laughs> it's like, wow, she does have teeth. <laughs> yeah, she does have teeth. And I get a lot of questions about my teeth too. Like, usually it's like normal questions, and then sometimes one or two pops out. And like, you're disgusting. Get your teeth fixed. I'm like. Fuck, why are you so rude? Yeah. <laughs> why are you so rude? Oh my goodness. I mean you got that iconic but picture. I've done now. like step Yeah. I <laughs> I got my Nate Diaz picture and that's worth more than anything else. That's... Absolutely. Just like people ask me so much, but it's like I actually got the first step fixed because I've drilled up my my t titanium screws. Okay. So they're drilled. I just haven't drilled in my uh, the actual teeth because uh, my dentist wants me to do this fight and then he will do it for me after. Oh, okay. So I'm getting real teeth. Soon, yeah. So, in like <laughs> two months, maybe three months. Yeah, three months. All right. So you don't want to wait yeah. till uh, till post career or anything? You know, not afraid of? Like I was thinking of, no, I was thinking about it and just like, they're kind of they're so well made mm. that it's like he's like it's kind of impossible for, for anybody like for a girl your size to knock them out because they're like screwed up up here it'll be harder for than real teeth to knock out essentially yeah <laughs> like they will be stronger than my real teeth and then you know i'm doing a lot of commentary i'm doing a lot of stuff and just like i you can't see that i have fake teeth i have like uh yeah. I have a prosthetic. Yeah, looks looks good from here. <laughs> it's kind of. Like, I mean, it looks okay, but it just feels better to have teeth. If like, if you're gonna do a lot of like media stuff and everything, and it's kind of like trying to bug me to have yeah. have a retainer. Yeah. So, I'm just thinking, you know what? And the UC has been great <laughs> taking care of everything. So, that's amazing. Yeah, of course. Can't go wrong with uh, good teeth either. So yeah, <laughs> that'll be exciting. Congrats on that. 
And congrats Thank on you. getting this big matchup as kind of your comeback fight, though, Panny. Like, Ketlin, yeah. that's a great spot. I mean, in terms of ranking and stuff, I'm probably the biggest one, unless I'm forgetting yeah. someone. She's number four right now. So, like, how exciting is that for you to come back and be in such a great spot immediately? I mean, I mean, I, um, a lot of stuff happened during this year, of course. Um, I mean, I think the division is wide open. Ever since Pina beat um, Nunes, like, um, uh, like the first time, it's become wide open. Even though she lost the belt, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, you know what? It, it's anybody's game. And I was supposed to fight Aldana before my injury. And a lot of stuff happened when I was away. I mean, I got bumped up to two ranking spots when I was injured. Yeah. I was uh, I was at number nine. And then Aspen Ladd went away. Sarah McMahon went away, you know, and I was bumped up to seven. And I was really happy that I got another like shot at the number four because I do think I deserve it. I've been five and I've uh, won five of six fights. Lately, and I've, I've been doing great. I had a tight fight with Rocky, and I mean, shit happens, of course. But I do, I do think that that's where I belong, and uh, really happy to get the fight in Europe. Yeah, also. yeah. I mean, it'll be uh, what only the second fight you've had in London, and last time was when you won the belt, right, in Cage Warriors. So I mean, is it gonna be fun to go back there? You, you remember? Oh, gotcha, you of remember course. My tenth it's my 10th year anniversary. I'm going back to London. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's where I won the cage race belt. And I haven't fought in Europe since Russia 2019 mm -hmm. uh, for uh, UFC Moscow. So, uh, and I mean, I'm pretty happy fighting in the States, but if I can get chance, get a chance to fight on one of the biggest European cards, why not? And I always get to travel so far. So, I'm I'm pretty excited not to travel that far. Yeah, I mean, what it's it's got to be three hours max. I can't. I'm trying to think of the map. It can't be one too and bad. A half. It's that close. One okay. One and a half hours to London from from Stockholm. Yeah, and and I also moved now, so I don't live in the south of Sweden anymore. I'm mm. even closer to everything. So. Oh, there you go. All right. Yeah, that's definitely very nice. Especially a big. The London cards have been huge the last couple, so that's uh, great. And you know, with the fight and everything, uh, yeah, not the worst spot whatsoever. So, I uh, just asked no, for Ketlin. Not at all. Like, what do you think of her as an opponent? And like the matchup wise, and you know, she obviously is coming off a loss too. Also against Rocky, who's just doing her thing right now, I guess, <laughs> with the winning yeah. streak she has. I mean, Rocky's been looking really good, and and I mean, I asked for Caitlin. Mm -hmm. I asked straight up my manager for I'm like ask me um uh, because it was either Caitlin or Holly and uh, and I asked for Holly as well but then uh, um we had some difference because it was before Aldana was getting the shot and everything and then we talked about it and um when we we talked all about the trainers and everything and I told and I told uh, my managers I I take either one I take I fight Holly any day I fight, fight Caitlin any day uh and uh then i heard i don't know i heard rumors about holly fighting somebody somebody else and then i'm just you know what just ask for caitlin yeah uh and i was thinking uh that would be cool to get her to to europe and uh, yeah so that's what i asked for and then just like a minute later so he told me it's on i'm like fuck let's go you know <laughs> so yeah i was really excited and i usually i ask for my opponents like i ask like every fight I ever asked for, you see, I've got. Mm -hmm. The only fight I didn't get asking for it was Misha Tate, mm -hmm. but or or else you see has been like uh, saying okay to my matchups. So I'm my own manager now. So. Yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> I just ask for the fights I want, and even though it's like hard uh, hard matchups, I don't like I don't really care because I think if you're in this top from like seven up like every fight is a hard fight yeah so if i fight uh caitlin or if i fight holly it's a hard fight either way and i mean caitlin beat holly yeah uh so so i mean either way is a really good win for me it's a big step up but that that also means it's a big reward i'm getting that number four spot and then i'm going for number one so 
Yeah, well, I mean, difficult. I was, I was going to ask about that too. Like, where exactly you think you know beating her would put you? Because of course, it gets you back on a win streak. It would get you that number four spot, and right in the mix where things are pretty open. Like, since you'd be a fresh name, like over, let's say, you know, Holly is fighting Mayra Bueno Silva. Depending what happens there, I don't know. You could be ahead of them still. Like, do you think you'd be one away, or how how close? Yeah. What do you think it would do exactly for you? Like, I think everything depends. On my performance I think I don't think it's enough just to beat Caitlin and in like a really close semi fight right. you know anything like that I think I need to make a big impression um, and I think the same for Caitlin because she had pretty pretty close fights she had pretty like you know Holly was a really close fight Rocky was a really close mm-hmm. fight you know it's kind of like I think me and Caitlin uh, Holly and Vieira and uh, no, um, Holly and uh, Bueno Silva, mm-hmm. and we need to make really big impressions. I think it's like, um, if I make a really good impression and, and the UC likes my fight and it's a good fight, I think I'm definitely a fighter for the title because everybody else has kind of fought for it. The Holly's fought for the title, yes. Rocky's fought for the title, Aldana's gonna fight for the title. I'm the first ever in like two star, two really cool things. It's the first ever Swede mm-hmm. to fight a female to fight for a title, and the only Iranian fighter on the UC roster. There is no other Iranians. We have guys on there. I'm the only female Iranian and the only Iranian overall to be in the UC. So it will be a first thing. Like it will be some new blood, in in this like contender division. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I got to point out. I think Benil Dariush would he be the other one? Oh yeah, no, yeah, but yeah, but Dariush <laughs> isn't he like have something? Like maybe a Syrian, if a uh, or something something like that. I like I kind of like maybe maybe I'm wrong because I have talked to Dariush and he he does speak <laughs> Persian uh, Farsi, but I'm not really. Maybe he is now that I think yeah. about it. But yeah, female. <laughs> yes, yes, female. definitely that. <laughs> Just yeah. had to give some uh, love to Benny. Yeah, it, yeah Benny, you got my love. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it will be cool. It will be cool to uh, be the first of something. I mean, I think it, people say like, "Oh, this one thirty-five division is so you know it's kind of low." And but you know what? We've had some OGs left in this like top five. We've been, you know, it's. It's uh, just because we're not that many at the top doesn't mean that, you know, we're still contenders. And I do believe that uh, I do believe I have a really good shot of making something cool in this division. I think we need some new blood. Oh, yeah, for sure. And again, like the streak you were on was so fun. And I mean, even the Rocky fight was a good fun fight, too. But like been looking sharp and continuing yeah, to made, grow. Made a, yeah. I just made a lot of mistakes in that fight, but I mean, Rock has been on a tear. I mean, she's been looking really good lately. Um, she's been looking better after our fight. So I'm thinking, I don't really know what's going to happen in this tile fight now. I mean, Aldana is looking pretty sharp as well, but um, yeah, we'll see about that. Are you more excited to see that over the trilogy? Yeah. I think I am. I mean, I don't mind the trilogy. I know everybody was like, oh, she got beat up the last one. I'm like, it's one on one, you know? <laughs> and it was pretty exciting. Even though it was kind of a beat down, it was yeah. pretty exciting. And I mean, I mean, Pena got a title fight out of a one fight streak. Yeah. I mean, anybody yeah. can get a title fight. I had like, if I didn't lose to Rocky, I was on a five win streak in the UFC. So. Just blocked me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight up. Uh, yeah, I was like, "Fuck, okay." <laughs> no, but I'm I'm really excited with this matchup with Caitlyn because, I mean, uh, uh, she's kind of different from the fighters I uh, fought in a while. Uh, I fought a lot of short fighters, and she's the one like I'm. I'm pretty excited to find somebody somebody a bit taller, a bit different style, and uh, yeah. I'm ready to win this fight. I think it's it's it's, it's a good time to win win a number four fight. Yeah, not the worst at all. And I'm curious though, because you mentioned like uh, you know the past two fights being close for her. Like yeah, the Rocky one. Some people think she could have won. Um, I might have even scored it for her. I'm trying to remember, but there was the Holly one too. But like, 
do you think the fact that her, those two fights recently have been close for her will kind of make her maybe more aggressive against you or do you think that'll affect anything in terms of how she'll approach you because of she doesn't want maybe to be that way again or anything Dude, I hope so. I hope she comes in there and says, I just want to brawl and I'll fucking brawl. That's like, I'm only <laughs> hoping for somebody to go in there and do that because everybody wants to, like, I, I, I don't get why people want to try to always take me down because usually it's really hard. Yeah. It's hard and, and I always get up and I probably will out grapple you as well. But I just wish somebody, I hope Caitlin like does this, just like, fuck it, let's just stand up and bang and i'm just like yeah let's go <laughs> like i've always been saying that to my core i'm just like I'm just hoping for somebody to say let's have a brawl let's yeah. have a fist fight <laughs> and that will make me happy usually it never happens but i'm just hoping for it so <laughs> yeah well, fingers crossed I just this hope she comes long. out aggressive i really hope she comes out aggressive that because i think that will bring out the best of me yeah i mean i mean it kind of seems to now that you mentioned that like when you look at kind of you know the past times that that has happened and uh you know you kind of what thrive in the chaos a little bit is that fair to say yeah yeah, yeah. i wake up <laughs> yeah I wake gets, up you, in the chaos. gets you going <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and this is something i've kind of been asking fighters lately panny and i'm kind of fascinated by it because i feel like in a way the best camp isn't necessarily a good camp because it's kind of you want it to be hard and kind of shitty to it to an extent i would imagine so like i'm curious for you like what do you say makes a good camp right because like i said the best camp wouldn't that's good right it feels weird to say good because you want it to be hard and to really test yourself and get you ready as best as you can right but in in that sense then what well, exactly makes it good you tell me we always say that if your camp isn't little bit shitty then you you had a uh, you really had to have a good camp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some days are like definitely like a lot of days are shitty. You aren't supposed to win really a lot of rounds. Like I don't win the I don't win all my rounds. Yeah. Cause you're supposed to be like on your back and you you ass kicked and then you kind of like turn a bit, but then you're getting back on your back again. So I'm just like uh and you know i latest i cried was yesterday i think yesterday <laughs> <Which you know>. so, <laughs> this morning <laughs> so i'm guessing yeah, this morning i cried no, but, <laughs> but, but i just like the only rule i have just don't do it in the round so you fuck up the round and fuck up your train your training partner's round mm. if you want to cry you either do it like before or after you don't fuck up the round that's the only thing I have. And uh, I cry after the rounds are done. <laughs> then I cry. <laughs> but yeah, not, like it's definitely shitty. Like I think, I think there is no such thing as a perfect camp. I mean, in my last camp, I broke my two fingers just a few weeks out. Mm. Uh, I, had, I had a terrible back. I was almost about to like not uh, uh, go through with my fight because uh, my back was hurting me so much. Uh, and I mean, this time around, I have like minor injuries, but all fighters yeah. have minor injuries. But yeah, so yeah, perfect camp is when it's not perfect, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny how that's the case, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, is what it is. But <laughs> it's like when I broke my two fingers in the last game, I just broke them. They're like, we have to check it. Like the guys, just, we have to check. It. I'm like, no. I taped it. I'm like, we're never talking about this again. Yes. Let's talk about it in like five <laughs> weeks. Because in five weeks, we can, they can all, they can be broken. You know, we can check it. We can check it out. So were they next Stop to each other or were they random? Random. Yeah, things. it was these two. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he broke them, but then I kind of like, when I closed, I could still like punch. I was like, okay, then we good. Right. <laughs> if I can still punch, was good. Yeah, that's that's pretty important. Yeah. So. <laughs> What would you say has been uh, your favorite win of your career so far? Hmm. My favorite win. Not the favorite fight, just the win, right? Yeah. I like my win over Alexis Davis. That was a really good name. Yeah. It's a fun one. I like my Alexis Davis. Um, I like the win over Sujar Eubanks because that was one of my hardest hardest camps to go through because of her style right so like strong and strong as fighter i ever fought 
and the hardest one to prepare myself for because she was so strong mm. um and just morally my second win over uh, lena because uh, it was also my 10 year anniversary because uh, we fought back in 2010 mm -hmm. uh 12 sorry 2012 and yeah. um, that was kind of like it always been like even though i finished that my first uh, our first fight with her uh by a tko it was kind of like we, we 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 come from the same town back at home here so for 10 years i've been hearing like oh it was the uh, like because it, it was a good stop it was yeah. a tko stoppage and they were like oh the the ref stopped it too early and stuff like that and i was like you know what when i get that win <laughs> <Yeah>. back <laughs> just you wait i don't care how long it takes i don't care how long it takes i'm just gonna show that i'm the I'm the baddest bitch in Sweden because that's that's kind of like it took me like because there's always been doubters and everything, but everybody knows who's the best bitch in Sweden. That's me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've always been that. So when I got that second one, I was like, yes, there's only one bitch here and it's me. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah you're like ah oh, the sweet, sweet relief yeah. <laughs> yes 10 years after like i would still i would still be that i don't know what how you call it in english but when you can't let something go and you kind of like it kind of grows on you when you can't forget about anything okay i would be old and in a wheel wheelchair i would still not forget <laughs> about it lena <laughs> <laughs> i was still like walking like this like I'm yeah the best yeah <laughs> are we that's cool great. now so. yeah <laughs> that's funny uh so i i mean is the is the fight different then you said you were when i said favorite win you were like different from the fight you kind of had a is there a loss that you enjoyed more than a win uh, uh sorry what did you say i kind of zoomed out for no sure. I, I said since you said you questioned uh, if it was fight or not is there a loss that you enjoy more than a win or what was the thought there <laughs> favorite uh, fight no, i guess no 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 I, I, like like uh, like favorite fight it would be my favorite fight in the ufc so far has been betch Cohea. okay she like she brought she brought out the dog in me because she went out there swinging and after she hit me with that left hook, that almost like, like almost knocked me out. <laughs> but but yeah, she brought out the dog in me, and I thought I looked great in that fight. So I'm hoping for something of that. I'm yes. hoping for another Brazilian. Showdown, yeah, so. yeah. There you go. Yes. Might be something, uh, something to that. So. <laughs> yeah. And I've always been curious, Penny. I don't know how I haven't asked you this before, but where did where did Bonsai come from? Where'd the nickname? Who gave you this? <laughs> I had an old boxing coach back at home from my hometown and he uh, he he said something about bonsai and he's like you should name okay this was my my before my my pro fight okay. he was like you should call yourself bonsai it's japanese i'm like yeah but what does it stand for and he's like leave no survivors i'm like fuck yeah <laughs> like nice <Sounds> good <laughs> and and i always thought that bonsai uh, goes well with my name yeah. And I thought, and I think like it was my first ever nickname and I was like, I'm just going with that one. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I love bonsai and, uh, sometimes like the, the mail, the post delivery writes bonsai on it. Nice. So I, I, I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's where it comes from. And I'm, I'm sticking with it. All right. So then what, what was the, what happened then when a uh, sexy scramble took over <laughs> for a little bit there? Yeah, I had, I, <laughs> I had a, I had a, I had a, um, I had a phase. <laughs> I guess so. But then I just realized, yeah, I, and I just realized, you know what? Because I had like a cool scramble in one of my fights, and then I'm just like, you know what? No, I'm bonsai. <laughs> That's what I am. That's what I am. That's hilarious. I mean, yeah, that was only for like a fight or two, right? I remember in Invicta is when you had that. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, no, this is not me. I'm bonsai to the bone. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, bonsai definitely more fitting, especially with uh, yeah. the meaning behind it. Very good stuff. There. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and uh, I'm curious, like toughest opponent, Penny. You fought so many good people in your career so far and continuing to, you know, as you only climb up and up. But somebody stands out as your toughest so far? So far, I mean, I'm guessing from from Vieira's uh, could be my toughest yet to come. 
Yeah. Vieira could be my toughest yet to come. It's just, uh, we will see. I think so. I think she's going to be tough. Uh, and, and you know, you know, when people ask me, oh, you know, how, how do you see this? How do you, how, how is it going to go? I'm like, dude, it's going to be hard. Yeah. You know, I don't even know. It's going to, like, that's how it is. You can't say it like 100%, oh, I'm going to feel perfect. And no, I'm like, this is a hard fight. This is, <laughs> you know, this is like top five. And um, I think every fight in the UFC is hard, but you have like, I'm I'm always brutally honest when it comes to my opponents. I'm like I'm expecting their A game, and mm-hmm. I'm expecting them to be sharp, and I'm expect expecting her to be at her best. And uh, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a hard fight. I think this is my toughest. Yeah, and it's gonna be very exciting, and we're looking forward yeah. to seeing you yeah. back in there, Panny. Thank but you. Yes. if you never Thank got you. into MMA, what do you think you'd be doing instead? And like just. That includes commentary and that kind of stuff away from the sport. Like sports? Yeah. Like just Well, like, let's just say just MMA in general. You think you'd be doing a different sport or if you never got into I it? I think I would be I, w- I would I would definitely think I would do some kind of sport. Uh, I was really into swimming and weightlifting. Okay. At the same time, I was like boxing when I was a kid. So, I was kind of debating what I was going to compete in. But I kind of choose boxing. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely do something like I would do like strong woman stuff, like <laughs> carry like rocks and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I think I would do that. Like after my MMA career, I would definitely just like go and uh, like pull trucks and stuff like that. <laughs> All right. I think I would enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, I mean that'd be that'd be fun to watch. <laughs> so. yeah, I think I, I think I would do that. <laughs> All right, so Panny the strong roid, woman. Super roid up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's well, your free of these restrictions? Look at crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh yes, we'll uh, cross that bridge when we get there. No need to now, Panny. The MMA yeah. thing's going pretty Later. well. So <laughs> yeah. going okay. Yeah. <laughs> But all right. Uh, yeah, I, I'm very excited for this one. I'm excited to see you back. Glad everything's all good. Glad uh, the Biggie birthday was good. All that good stuff. And um, yeah, I'll let you get on with the rest of uh, your day. I appreciate you taking time so much. Always great chatting with you, Panny. And uh, always you. great watching thank you, you so fight. Much. And <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for catching up with me. You're my uh, first interview in over a year. There we go. Had to be first because uh, I was too late last time. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that's me because on, on on fight week, I'm just like I'm turn off my phone. Yeah, I, I get like zoomed out. I'm like I'm enjoying the moment. I'm just enjoying everything. Yeah, totally fair. I never like to bother fighters on fight week anyway, so that's on me. But we're all good now. Thank you for the chat. All right, take care, Fanny. Have a good morning. Yes, thank you. Bye.